Hello everyone. Welcome to Current Affair MCQ's program. Let's begin with previous day's practice question. Question was consider the following statements regarding overseas citizenship of India that is OCI scheme. One, the OCI scheme was introduced by amending the Citizenship Act 1955 in August 2005. Two, a registered overseas citizen of India is granted multiple entry multi-purpose and lifelong visa for visiting India. Which of the above statements is or are correct? One only, two only, both one and two or neither one nor two. The correct answer is option C, both one and two. The OCI scheme was introduced by amending the Citizenship Act 1955 in August 2005. The scheme was launched during the Pravasi Bharatiya Divas Convention 2006 at Hyderabad. Hence, statement 1 is correct. A registered overseas citizen of India is granted multiple entry, multi-purpose, lifelong visa for visiting India and is entitled to general parity with non-resident Indians in respect of all facilities available to them. Hence, statement 2 is also correct. Hence, option C is the correct answer. Now let's begin today's session. First question is, consider the following statements regarding the panel on critical energy transition minerals appointed by United Nations Security General. One, the panel on critical energy transition minerals will work on issues relating to equity, transparency, investment, sustainability and human rights. Two, it is co-chaired by South Africa and India. Three, critical minerals include copper, lithium, nickel, cobalt and rare earth metals among others. How many of the statements given above are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none? The correct answer is option B, only two. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has appointed a new 38-member panel on critical energy transition minerals to work on issues relating to equity, transparency, investment, sustainability and human rights. Hence, statement one is correct. It is co-chaired by South Africa, Nozipo, Joyce, Maksautako, Diseko and the European Union, Ditejul Jorgensen. Hence, statement 2 is not correct. Critical minerals include antinomy, beryllium, bismuth, cobalt, copper, gallium, germanium, graphite, hafnium, indium, lithium, molybdenum, niobium, nickel, PGE, phosphorus, potash, rare earth elements, rhenium, silicon, strontium, tantalum, tellurium, tin, titanium, tungsten, vanadium, zirconium, selenium and cadmium. Hence, statement 3 is correct. Hence, option B is the correct answer. Next question is, consider the following pairs. Language models developed by 1. Fee 3 Mini, Microsoft 2. Claude Anthropic Gem 3. Gemini Google Which of the pairs given above is or are correctly matched? 1 only, 1 and 2 only, 2 and 3 only or 1, 2 and 3. The correct answer is option D, 1, 2 and 3. Microsoft unveiled Fee 3 Mini as part of its family of open AI models designed to be capable and cost-effective small language models. Claude is a family of large language models developed by Anthropic. Gemini, formerly known as BART, is a generative artificial intelligence chatbot developed by Google. Hence, option D is the correct answer. Next question is, consider the following statements. Statement 1. The paradox of thrift suggests that an increase in overall savings rates across an economy may lead to a decrease in total economic savings. Statement 2. The paradox of thrift theory is based on a circular flow of the economy in which current spending drives future spending. Which one of the following is correct in respect of the above statements? Both statements are correct and statement 2 is the correct explanation for statement 1. Both statements are correct and statement 2 is not the correct explanation for statement 1. Statement 1 is correct but statement 2 is incorrect or statement 1 is incorrect but statement 2 is correct. The correct answer is option B. Both statements are correct and statement 2 is not the correct explanation for statement 1. The paradox of thrift also known as paradox of savings suggests that while individual savings are ostensibly good, an increase in overall savings rates across an economy may lead to a decrease in total economic savings. 
hence statement 1 is correct the paradox of thrift theory is based on the circular flow model of the economy it is based on the assumption that increase in current spending drives future spending current spending results in more income for current producers those producers rationally deploy their new income sometimes expanding business and hiring new workers these new workers earn new income which then may be spent hence statement 2 is correct hence option b is the correct answer Next question is regarding centralized public grievance redressal and monitoring system or CP grams consider the following statements one CP grams is an online platform available to the citizens 24 into 7 to lodge their grievances to the public authorities on any subject related to service delivery two it is a single portal connected to all the ministries and departments of the government of india and states 3 cp grams does not provide an appeal facility to the citizens if they are not satisfied with the resolution by the grievance officer which of the statements given above is or are correct one and two only two only three only or one two and three the correct answer is option a one and two only cp grams is an online platform available to the citizens 24 into 7 to lodge their grievances to the public authorities on any subject related to service delivery hence statement 1 is correct It is a single portal connected to all the ministries or departments of the government of India and states. Hence statement 2 is correct. CP grams also provides an appeal facility to the citizens if they are not satisfied with the resolution by the grievance officer. Hence statement 3 is not correct. After closure of grievance if the complainant is not satisfied with the resolution, he or she can provide feedback. Hence option A is the correct answer. Next question is regarding the India's immunization program consider the following statements when a child is considered fully immunized when they get all the vaccines they need before they turn 5 years old two india has successfully eradicated polio maternal and neonatal tetanus three zero dose refers to children who have completed routine vaccinations how many of the statements given above are correct only one only two all three or none the correct answer is option a only one India's immunization program UIP that is universal immunization program is one of the world's most extensive public health programs a child is considered fully immunized if they receive all the required vaccines as per the national immunization schedule within their first year of life hence statement 1 is not correct the country has certified polio free in 2014 and eliminated maternal and neonatal tetanus in 2015 hence statement 2 is correct As per the latest estimates, India has successfully reduced the number of zero dose children to 1.1 million in 2022 from 2.7 million in 2021, covering an additional 1.6 million children with life-saving vaccination. Zero dose refers to children who failed to receive any routine vaccination. Hence statement 3 is not correct. Hence option A is the correct answer. Next question is which of the following are examples of direct taxes in India? One customs duty Two dividend distribution tax, three capital gains tax, four income tax. Select the correct answer using the codes given below. One only, two, three, and four. One and three, or one, two, and five. The correct answer is option B. Two, three, and four. Direct taxes include dividend distribution tax or DDT. It is a levy imposed on dividends distributed by the companies to their shareholders. Capital gains tax. This tax applies to the gains arising from the sale or transfer of capital assets. such as real estate stock and mutual funds among others income tax individuals hindu undivided families partnerships and association of persons pay income tax on basis of their income and age examples of indirect taxes include goods and services tax that is gst excise duty and customs duty hence option b is the correct answer next question is consider the following statements regarding agriculture export policy 2018 When the policy was released by the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare and aims to increase agricultural exports, to it strives to promote novel, indigenous, organic, ethnic, traditional, and non-traditional agri products exports. Which of the above statements is or are correct? One only, two only, both one and two, or neither one nor two. The correct answer is option B, two only. Agriculture Export Policy 2018 was released by the Department of Commerce, Ministry of Commerce and Industry. It aims to increase agricultural exports to 60 billion dollars by 2022 and reach 100 billion dollars in the next few years. Hence statement 1 is not correct. It strives to promote novel, indigenous, organic, ethnic, traditional and non-traditional agricultural products exports. Hence statement 2 is correct. Hence option B is the correct answer. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट रिगार्डिंग प्रिवेंशन ऑफ क्रुअलिटी टू एनिमल्स एक्ट नाइनटीन सिक्सटी वन द एक्ट प्रोवाइडेड फॉर द एस्टेब्लिशमेंट ऑफ द एनिमल वेलफेयर बोर्ड ऑफ इंडिया टू द एक्ट प्रोहिबिट्स द यूज ऑफ एनिमल्स फॉर एक्सपेरिमेंट्स विद व्यू टू सिक्योरिंग एन एनिमल्स लाइफ विच ऑफ द स्टेटमेंट गिवन अब इज और आर करेक्ट वन ओनली टू ओनली बोथ वन एंड टू और नीदर वन नॉर टू द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन ए वन ओनली The Animal Welfare Board of India was established in 1962 under Section 4 of the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act 1960. Hence statement 1 is correct. While it criminalizes several types of actions that cause cruelty to animals, it exempts for example from its coverage the use of animals for experiments with a view to securing medical advancement. Hence statement 2 is not correct. Hence option A is the correct answer. Next question is the district of Chura Chandpur is sometime seen in the news is located in Mizoram Meghalaya Manipur or Tripura the correct answer is option C Manipur Chura Chandpur district is the largest district in Manipur occupying 20.5% of state's area the district headquarter of Chura Chandpur is the most multi ethnic and cosmopolitan hill town in Manipur and it is also known as Manipur's second town It neighbors Myanmar on the east, Tamenglong on the west, Imphal Valley on the north and Mizoram on the south. It is a hilly district with a very small percentage of the plain area which is about 5.57% of the total geographical area. Hence option C is the correct answer. Last question is regarding the Indian Institute of Astrophysics that is double IA consider the following statements. One double IA is an autonomous body under the Department of Space. Two a next generation ultraviolet telescope named Indian Spectroscopic and Imaging Space Telescope is being developed by Indian Institute of Astrophysics. Select the correct answer using the codes given below. One only, two only, both one and two, or neither one nor two. The correct answer is option B, two only. Indian Institute of Astrophysics is an autonomous body under the Department of Science and Technology. Hence, statement one is not correct. Double I A is working on the next generation ultraviolet telescope named Indian Spectroscopic and Imaging Space Telescope. Hence, statement two is correct. This telescope will look at galaxies at a high resolution. Hence, option B is the correct answer. Now is the time for practice question. Which of the following are advantages of photonic computing? One, minimal junction heating. Two, immune to electromagnetic interference. Three, provides low loss transmission. Four easy to develop photonic crystals. Select the correct answer using the codes given below: one, three, and four; two, three, and four; one, two, and four; or one, two, and three. Send the answer of this question in the comment section. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching. For more informative content, like, share, and subscribe, and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.